WebEx, they took up the whole screen. So, Jason, did we lose you? No, nope, you still got me. Okay. Yep. I'm still here. So we got Jason, Ben, Joe. Are you there? I think we lost Joe. I am. Oh, yeah. we are. Yay. Ruth, Paul, Nick. Good. Awesome. So um, let's call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. And um, we already called the roll. Dave took care of that. Thank you. Uh, I'll open the floor for a motion to approve the February 27th, 2020 regular monthly meeting minutes. Move approval. Second. So Ben is the mover and the shaker. Who was the second? Jason, I think, was the first. Ben was the second, right? That's yeah, I was second. I thought it was Ben. But who moved? Oh, Ruth's moving. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll call him Ben and Jason. Um, any comments, questions, additions? Hi, Thomas. I got one. I'm on a mission, Wendy. Okay. I've got one. Go ahead, Ben. So Nancy Sinclair and David Sinclair were not at the meeting. Um, they weren't. Uh, and the others present were. They've been to so many. I keep track. Uh, they weren't in that one? Pleasant Hill. Not last month. Oh. Okay, thank teach, you. Teach me to use the... Okay. Caught with a cookie cutter. Yep. Thank you, Ben. Yes. Any more? All right. All in favor as amended. Actually... I. <laughs> All right. Bye. This is this is the way we're going to do it. Uh, it's quicker. Any opposed? Any abstained? The motion carries unanimously. Perfect. Is that you, Judith? Oh, just someone muting. Is that a mute sound? We're getting used to the sounds over here. Anyway, next order of business, the superintendent's report. Okay, this was written a week ago, so um, things have changed daily, as you know. But actually, I think it's fairly current. Currently, staff are healthy. Nobody has any symptoms or uh, is sick in any way. Actually, it's uh, one of the healthiest times that we have had here at the district. Um, we're fully staffed and working normal business hours. Uh, let's see, all facilities are fully operational and we do not foresee any issues with meeting permit or maintaining operations. We've contacted all our suppliers, uh, both um, materials and chemicals, and other than toilet paper, everything seems to be uh, readily available. Um, as you all know, some facilities and departments have split shifts into shift work to provide graded social distancing um, or shut down. Public Works here in Skyro is actually shut down except for emergency operations, at least that's my understanding. Uh, but um, our staff, uh, does not tend to work together in, in close quarters, uh, I mean, and, uh, and frankly, a lot of our work I, requires two people uh, for safety reasons, and so that's why we've maintained uh, our current operation as, as uh, we see fit. Uh, the staff seems very amenable to it. They're, they're very comfortable with this arrangement. So in, unless things change or I get direction otherwise, I'll, I'll continue down that road. Uh, we're keeping abreast uh, of the rapidly changing situation, uh, monitoring the news, watching safety videos, and attending webinars. Um, the date, uh, this list is actually relatively, uh, uh, we've done much more than this. 
but we've done uh, protecting yourself against COVID-19, uh, updates on legal practices and tips for business employees uh, and employers, um, a, a webinar on the uh, pandemic uh, contingency of operations and essential personnel, and a webinar on the Clean Water Act regulatory issues with regards to the pand pandemic. Uh, CDC did produce a fact sheet addressing water and wastewater concerns uh, titled Water Transmission in uh, COVID, not COVID-19, um, and I attached it to your packet, and I also posted it on the website along with this write-up. I, I also included this on our website. Uh, and, it, and it's important to note that the CDC d does state in summary they, uh, there is minimal chance of spreading uh, COVID-19 uh, via wastewater. So that's my, do you want to stop there and have a discussion around that or do you want me to just keep going? Any questions so far for the superintendent? Okie dokie, keep going. Move on. Getting back to our normal uh, reports, a uh, copy of the monthly report of operation for the month of February is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.47 million gallons, and again, our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We have averaged, uh, we averaged 95% DOD removal and 97% TSS removal for con uh, uh, effluent concentrations that averaged 12 and 6 milligrams per liter, respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of February uh, is also included in your packet. As noted, there was some errant data. Uh, the errant data for the plant and pump station number six were due to a PLC communication failure. Initially, this failure was intermittent, which made identification problematic. The unit has since been replaced, and uh, the cause of the errant data pump station, uh, and the cause of the, er of the errant data at pump station 14 is not known at this time. Um, we'll figure it out once something breaks completely. Um, as noted last month, the generator for pump station 8 was damaged on delivery. Power Products has ordered a replacement unit, and it should be delivered in another four to six weeks. Uh, the Hawk Company has requested the Scarborough Sanitary District to participate in the alpha testing of a new process software that they are developing. Hawk already has the Claros system, which is a very robust process software, but very expensive. Um, and so it really was catered towards the larger facilities. I, I believe Portland Water District uses it, um, and they uh, have good experience with it. Uh, to make it more palatable for the, the reason for this new software is to make it more palatable for the smaller facilities uh, at a lower price. And Hawk has decided to develop this lighter version, uh, uh, which we will be helping them out develop. We're one of eight facilities across the country that are assisting them in, in this development. I, I want to ask, you know, given your. Um, <clears throat> uh, interest in Hawk and what you said in at a Hawk presentation, how in the world did they pick you to do this? What our chairman is referring to, I do not mince words with Hawk when I do not think they're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And um, so I guess maybe they want to hear the truth. I guess they do. All right. I just wanted to maybe bring that up because that will a little more clarity. Alpha testing, I imagine, is um, first testing. Beta testing would be the second testing. Alpha testing, I asked this <laughs> question, actually. Uh, alpha testing is the actual development of the software. OK. And then the, once the software is developed, they send it beta testing. That's where it is. Good. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Willette and Associates continues to work on our annual audit. The audit should be ready for presentation at our next monthly meeting. Let's see uh, this year, we budgeted to replace um, obsolete VFDs within the plant. Uh, Carl has started, had, we received these VFDs last month. Carl started the installation. 
um, and beginning in the headworks and as depicted below on the left are the new VFDs that he's uh, uh, mounted on the wall and on the right is the uh, motor control center to which he is running uh, the wires to and Far to the right is the uh, old VFDs, which will be taken offline relatively shortly. Uh, just on a, a side note, uh, we did have a VFD, one of the obsolete VFDs for our waste sludge pump failed this past month. Um, so it, we got these in a timely manner so that the, the units are starting to, to fail. And so instead of repairing it, he's just swapping it out with a new, new one that he already has on hand. And that is my report. Any questions? What is, what is VFD? Ah, good question. Variable frequency drive. So what it is doing, uh, Ruth, is it's changing the, uh, the hertz that is fed to the motors from uh, normal hertz, our 60 cycle, and it reduces the cycles down and it allows the electric motor to slow down or, or, or speed up to its full speed at 60 hertz. It's a means of controlling the speed of the equipment and saving energy. Mm, okay, thanks. Good question. <laughs> it is a good question. Unfortunately, Root's feed makes it look like a Japanese movie where the yes, sound is offset from the, the video. <laughs> Ruth just froze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Ben. Wasn't me. Oh, okay. Uh, just a quick question on Claro, Steve. Um, are they also including the process optimization package in that, or do you know yet? I don't. I do not know yet. They've just started collecting our um, data sheets to to start developing the, the package. Okay. Interesting. That's exciting. Any more questions? All right. Moving on to correspondence. Um, Mint Salon. Uh, block uh, 800 Technology Way attaches a copy of the ability to serve letter for the proposed 34 booth salon and an anticipated flow of 3,400 gallons per day. So I, uh, that will be coming in front of us uh, maybe even as soon as next month. Coastal routes on one one way road. I attach a copy of the ability to serve letter for that proposed. 10,000 square foot marijuana cultivation facility uh, within an existing warehouse, which is located in South Portland. Uh, this is uh, the wastewater flow is anticipated at 20, uh, 2,545 gallons per day for both process and sanitary waste. However, this parcel is governed by an intermunicipal agreement which limits the flow of the sanitary wastewater only. Um, as noted, this agreement would need to be amended for this project to move forward. I've started having discussions with South Portland. Um, this was an agreement that was put together, I'm not quite sure when. Um, 187. Yeah, a very long time ago when that all that property was owned by one, uh, uh, one um, entity and they had a force main that ran across several of the lots that they no longer have access to. So they, their only option is to flow into Scarborough. So I've had the discussion with uh, South Portland. They're amenable to, to uh, amending the agreement uh, as long as we are also. So I'll start, I'll start working on that this coming month. Now, will this flow to that pump station that I think a few years ago had trouble with riding on? Away. No, that's going. No, this will go to River. River. Okay. Uh, and you say twenty five hundred gallons per day, but it's a marijuana facility, so it might not be a whole day. It might wait a few days. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. 
Uh, the, the the individual, the uh, the actual <laughs> grower was in, and he was. Um, I was impressed by his knowledge on how much wastewater that he anticipated to generate, uh, taking into account the amount of uh, uptake the plants have mm -hmm. versus what they actually uh, flow. One thing I did have have a discussion with is that we will actually need some form of measuring on the effluent flow. Otherwise, they're going to get billed for whatever water is being used at the facility. So uh, they recognize that and they'll they will move with that intent. Uh, and finally, lot 53 for the Downs. Uh, I attached an ability to serve letter for that uh, property. It's an 18,000 square foot warehouse slash office space with an anticipated flow of 1,200 gallons per day. Any questions about the correspondence? On the uh, marijuana facility, the coastal routes, Floor drains are in that system, right? The 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 system right now has not been designed. They're actually completely gutting the uh, the facility. Uh, they may have some floor drains in the grow areas where they're watering the plants, or it may be on tables. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to be arranged. Because yeah, we'll see that before before we give our approval. Yeah, we'll see all the details around that. Okay, thanks. I had a question about that, um, or a comment actually. One of the things that works sometimes is go based on water use from WD, uh, but you put a meter not on the effluent flow to our system, but on the flow to the growing area or wherever the irrigation is going to go. To D dust. And then deduct. That might be a simpler way to do it because it's not all. It, they get about a twenty percent flow through when they, they do that. When they water, so and it's that not goes a to full the drain. deduct. Okay. All right. Uh, otherwise, they get a lot of uh, mineral deposits within the soil that uh, right. impede the, the growth of the the, the plants. So you could do that, as I've been told. Yeah, as you've been told. But <laughs> what you could do is anyway. Home meters on those gravity pipes are challenging. They're going to have to pump. Ah, never mind. Easy, 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 easier anyway. Thank you. Question with Coastal Roots. Yes, sir. So, so right now, uh, all this is is uh, you're working on language for the agreement, correct? That's all we're considering at this point in time. This is just advising us that you're going to read. Revising the agreement with South Portland. Yeah, I'm, you're not, you're not uh, voting on anything at this point. It's just come in front of the, the uh, for ability to serve as move forward with the project. It will come both the agreement and the approval of the project would be come in front of the board at the same time. I assume. Yes. Thank you. I had a quick question about that. Um, that same project, just out of curiosity, does it have um, a higher nutrient content, the, the wastewater from this process, or other characteristics that we anticipate? I don't know at this point, uh, Paul. Um, we have tested, we have a grow facility down in Snow's Canning, um, and we have tested that, and it's actually. Um, Fairly, uh, it, it's a higher strength waste, but by, not by a lot. Um, he already has a grow facility in Biddeford, and one of the things I was telling him about that I would require is some effluent testing off of that facility to help us determine the characteristics that it, it will have for wastewater. Any more comments, questions? Okay, moving on to old businesses, non new business, Acura car dealership on Pegasus Parkway. On behalf of uh, Patriot Realty uh, Saco LLC, Sebago Technics has requested the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees 
approval to discharge into the sewer the sanitary waste from the proposed Acura dealership. The proposed building is 21,500 square feet of space for retail service and a car wash. A oil water library will be installed downstream from the floor drains and the wash bay. Tobago Technics has estimated the anticipated wastewater at uh, 1,474 gallons per day. Uh, the proposed sewer system is as follows. It's 468 feet of six inch sanitary sewer service, an oil water separator and three manholes. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The wastewater flow limited to the 1474 gallons per day and any flows in excess of the approved amount are subject to additional approvals. Uh, this project is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. Any additional flows in excess of this are subject to additional approvals. The current capacity reserve fee is $16.57 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the record. Based on uh, the current fee and flow, the capacity reserve fee due is $24,424.18. Uh, TV inspection of the installed sewer is required at the completion of the sewer project. A sewer permit is required and a complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. Um, one of the reasons why, I'm going to stop right there because one of the reasons why I add that with regards to no site sewer work there's a lot of times so the general contractor will get on site and clear the lot, and at that time, they have, in the past, they have installed the sewer, it, and, uh, and uh, we had to put a, the, the stop to that, because they're getting the sewer installed before they paid any of our fees or even pulled the permit. So I want I get that out right away to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, interceptor permit is required. A complete application and internal plumbing plan and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no plumbing or sewer work shall be completed. Final plans shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the sewer extension permit and professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings and stamp PDF for CAD drawings and stamped paper copies be submitted to the district on completion of the project. I'll entertain a motion to approve with the conditions stipulated. So moved. Ben. Thank you, Ben, for saying that. I'll second. I think that was Paul. It was. Any discussion, questions, comments? I had a question on the uh, sand oil water separator. On the plan view of the, on sheet seven, they're calling for a grease interceptor. Is the the wrong one. I think it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's a septic tank, oil water separator, grease interceptor. You know, they're, they're usually about the same. But what, uh, with regards to the, uh, middle of the oil water separator interceptor permit they have to provide me um, uh, sizing information with regards to the oil water separator and a cut sheet with regards to what the actual oil water separator is so we'll we'll make sure that it is number one appropriately sized and of the uh, appropriate makeup that we need okay I have a question. Go ahead, Ruth. So, because I'm new. So now everybody's living at their home, most likely for the next two months, including all of our students and all this other stuff. Does that do anything to change the flows of certain areas? Um, Does that make sense? We really noticed it here. No? Uh, we, you know, and... I was talking to uh, Matt Hyde, our DEP inspector, today, actually. He called to check in on us, and he asked the questions with regards, have we seen any issues with regards to wipes or plugging? He probably asked you the same question. And we have not seen any uh, 
we haven't had any impact as a result of that yet. We haven't seen any major changes to flows, have you? We've noticed that the flows aren't as high as they could be from all those restaurants and hotels that aren't open anymore in Wells. However, when you put all those students at home, and oh, by the way, oh, I live in New York, I live in Massachusetts. I own a home in Wells. Hmm, if I have to work from home, which one am I gonna choose? Hmm, so to make up for the lack of restaurant flow, I think the, re the seasonal residents are moving in a lot sooner. So it's almost a wash, no, no pun intended, but I think our, our flows are a little down, and my concern is that because those, were, and I don't know about, the rates here are, are fixed based on just residents, so it won't be affected as much. But there are districts like ours and others that base their rates on flow. So our rates are based on 2019 flow. Next year's rates, based on this year's flow, are going to go because right. we aren't getting those high flows from the restaurants, from the hotels, from all those campgrounds, from wherever. you know. And if you have an industrial or commercial enterprise that's got a lot of water use and they're not doing anything, you know, then you know, I know our commercial rates are based on flow, right? Yes, our community rates are based on flow, but there, it, it's a, it, it's a two, there's two pieces to that puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, the first piece is their flow they used in the quarter that they end build for. There's, there's a, a, a quantity flow for that. And then there's a basically, uh, I'm going to call it a readiness to serve charge mm -hmm. based on their, 20, their peak quarter 2019 flow. Oh, sort of like a demand charge, the electric company charges. Exactly. And uh, so even though their flows right now are going to be down, I suspect come summertime, hopefully we're back to normal. And then that people will go off. Those people okay. go back. All right. Right. So it should be. Right. That's a very good question, Ruth. Because even like my family came in from New York and um, we – we don't use public sewer, but anyway, but we have wipes and on top of all the wipes, I write, please do not flush. But I didn't know if it made a difference. Like people aren't going to go away for spring break this year. You know what I mean? It's so we have a more steady activity. Of course, I'm making all of our boys go outside, but um, <laughs> um, I just didn't know what it did to go outside. <laughs> You should see my three-year-old. He's a king now. Uh, yep. well, but I just didn't know, are we prepared for all of that? It's like Super Bowl Sunday for a month. Yeah, Everybody the, being home. The, the funny thing about it is, because I see it in my house, uh, you know, during a normal work week period, you get these uh, diurnal flow variations, and there's a lot that tends to be a bigger peak in the, uh, Evening, right? well, in the uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. while people are getting ready to go out, out of the house and work. And then when they get home, there's also another peak, you know, from like 5 to, to 9 p.m. And then the flows settle down. I, I suspect what we're going to start seeing is a, a flattening of that. The kids aren't getting up in the morning like they used to. Um, nor is nor is Stacy. She's sleeping in too. Um, <laughs> so it uh, happens. Yeah, this is what it is. So yeah, that makes you sense. Think, of, think about it from if you think about it from a school uh, a school age person. I mean, uh, all of our town schools are sewered. Uh, half of the town, a good portion of the town, school age kids live outside the district's area so now they're taking that flows from the school and pushing it onto a non-service area and wow, that's it, interesting. We, it should offset it mm. unless of course Ruth you tell your kids to run into sewer areas and go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> I mean, NBC just had a big article today with uh 
New York City having clogs of T-shirts and wipes. So hopefully we don't see that. <laughs> oh, when you run out of toilet paper, you got to do something, you know. But we are running into wipes in our system. I imagine Scarborough is running into. We will. Work. Hopefully not. It'll All right. So back to the matter at hand. Sorry. Thank you very much. Oh, that's right. We're going to vote on a, a, a proposed project. What was that again? The Acura? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I will call for a vote in, unless there's more discussion on that particular subject. Oh. So, any against the project? Any abstentions? Then the motion carries unanimous. Thank you. So Dave, you're really close now. Super. <laughs> <laughs> Which one you guys get the full full effect? <laughs> you do look healthy. You do look healthy. <clears throat> but you need to shave. So <laughs> <laughs> So how about this? We have a budget summary presented for two months. Looks like we spent 11% after January and February. I'll entertain a motion to approve as presented. M move approval, Jason. Second. And Joe seconded. Thank you. Any questions, comments? I had a question about do you expect any additional cost because of this virus? Um, probably. <laughs> Hard to say. Probably, it, you know, especially if we start getting some plugs due to wipes, it'll be we have to respond to that. Um, with regards to everything else, I think we should be okay. I, I don't. I don't. Right, right at the moment, I don't see any issues. Well, with that, Dave, do you think it's good to do a PSA at this point? Uh, with regards to the wipes? Uh, yeah, anything that shouldn't be going down the tube. Yeah, well, actually, uh, the DEP has done that. And uh, they sent out a notice. Um, and I've also been working with uh, Public Works. They sent out a notice for us uh, to ad uh, address some issues with regards to what should be flushed and what shouldn't be flushed. DEP did a statewide uh, PSA, and I actually heard it on the radio. Uh, so it is getting up there. It is. Uh, the other thing is, you know, Dave and I are part of an email <laughs> string with other superintendents in Southern Maine. And it's interesting that Alex, Alex Bushner from Biddeford did a video where he had two jar tests, one with a white, one with toilet paper, and he had a time, and he shook them both up. Less than a minute later, the toilet paper broke up. The wipes stayed together for minutes, hours, days. And then he put them both out in the sink and showed what would happen. So when I get my act together, I'm going to have that link put on our website, you know, so if people really want to see anything like that, you know, the science in action. Scott Berman and I actually did that over at Fulton Water District one time where we timed it, where we uh, put toilet paper in one jar, uh, wipe in another jar with a mixer, and mm -hmm. put two mixers on, and the toilet paper just disintegrated, and... He took a picture of the wipe the next day, and it was still intact. Intact. So. And they'll stay together for months in water. They won't break down. But it's a good point there, Joe, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I should know. I mean, I don't think we have any social media other than our website, right? No, just our, just our website. Just approaching that. What's that? We're just approaching that part of society. We might, we might want to consider that aspect. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yes, uh, Dave just handed a press release 
where the DEP reminds Mainers of what not to flush. I don't understand facial tissue, though. They have that on there. What about for tissues? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, tissues actually have um, fiber weaved into them so that when you blow your nose, it doesn't fall well, apart. <laughs> yeah, but they break down too. You know, not as not quickly as, quickly. as sort of okay, good to know. So, Dave, if you want to um, send that to me, I'll post it on the um, Scarborough Maine Moms Facebook page. Oh, the, P uh, the PSA on likes and stuff. This thing. Whatever you want me to post. Yeah, I got. I got enough. I got the thing from DEP, and I'll also send you what I sent. Um, um, Public Works, which had okay. a, a little. <clears throat> Of a kid looking into a toilet and it said, What the flush? Okay, so cool. All right, um, weaving it back to the budget summary. Any more questions, Thomas? Say it again. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions from the other trustees then? All right, any opposed? Any abstained? The motion carries unanimously. All right, public comments. There is no public, no comment. Trustee comments. How about we start with Ruth? She's still up. <laughs> Thank you very much for all of the hard work you all are doing to um, um, make sure things are still flowing in this crazy time. So I appreciate all of your hard work. Thank you. Cool. Next in line, it would be Joe, at least going up. Hi, Joe. Hi. Uh, no, thanks, Dave, uh, and the Maine legislature for allowing us to do a video conference in uh, this trustees meeting. Um, I've been exposed to enough uh, COVID patients that I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting around all of you. So this is very beneficial. Um, and hopefully the district uh, remains safe over the next, what I'm going to say is probably next couple months and uh, appreciate everybody's work. So thank you. I'm all good. Cool. Uh, Paul? Um, definitely a big kudos to, to everyone to keep, you know, keeping things moving forward and um, these, these times. And I would definitely say, please, you know, obviously I know you're already doing it and it's great that you're doing it, but be safe. We, you, you define essential. You are essential. We need you. That's all for me. All right. Ben? Yeah, I, I, I uh, echo that. Uh, kudos to everybody at the plan. I appreciate everybody coming into work when they have to and, um, if you could let us know if, if someone comes down with it, could you let us know? Or I guess you can't. That would be personal information, right? Yes. I can let you know if somebody at the plant comes down with it. Okay. Yes, I can't say. Oh, that's <laughs> just not just not a. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Jason. Hey, well, Nick, it's glad to hear that I'm at the top. That was uh, that was the most important message you sent there. <laughs> just kidding, everybody. No, uh, just want to say thanks again to the employees. You are the senior for, uh... trustee. <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, thanks to all the employees for uh, sticking this out and uh, getting through the day. Glad to hear everybody is healthy down there. Uh, Wendy, I know uh, the audit continues to go on, but uh, hopefully your part's done. But uh, thank you for another successful audit year, or what I expect to be another successful audit year. And, uh, yeah, no, uh, stay safe, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Great. Well, thanks for setting up the video conference. I think it was successful. Um, you know, I will echo my fellow trustee comments. Everyone stay well. 
be careful, especially you, Joe, on the front lines. I want to thank you and you for uh, keeping us safe. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I'm curious, just a quick question to all of you. Any Anyone think they like this format? I want a different... No, I think think this works well. Hopefully, we don't have to use it again. But uh, insight tells me we might. So I think it was great. Good job setting it up. I've been doing it a lot lately on Zoom, so it works for me. Yeah, my 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 ears actually hurt from all the earbud time that I've had over the last two weeks. But uh, I'm getting used to it now. Good to know. All right. Um, with that said. I'll entertain the fun. I like it. Yeah, that was rude. What was that, Ruth? I was trying to talk quickly. I like it. So oh, thank you very much for making this happen. What? Cool. So I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Joe. Do I hear a second? second? I think it was his dog. Oh, the dog. <laughs> Woodrow said, motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. Good to know. And someone had a second. I thought it was Jason. Correct. Uh, any opposed? I didn't think so. Uh, any abstain? Uh, well, someone did, but that's beside <laughs> the point. <plan. laughs> the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. Have a good night, Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.